Okay students, so we're going to put it all together now. We're going to work out the vector resolutes for two vectors, A and B. So A is equal to I plus 2J and B is equal to 3I plus 4J. We're going to work out the vector resolutes for A on the vector B, but we're going to do it in several parts. So first of all, we're going to start off by finding the unit vector B. So I'm just going to start writing on this screen. So just underline that and start working on the solution. So if you recall, the unit vector B, B is worked out by taking the vector B itself and dividing it by the magnitude of the vector B. So for this case it's going to be the vector B is equal to 3i plus 4j and we divide it by its magnitude which is using its components, we sum the components we square those components and then sum them. So this is going to be equal to 3i plus 4j over 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 9 plus 16 is 25, so that's going to be the square root of 25, which is really lucky because that works out to be 3 fifths i plus 4 fifths j. So that's just a vector that's going to be in the direction of B, but it has um, a magnitude of 1. That's all we found. So we've got the direction. So this is the direction. Okay, so we found the direction that we want to go in. So the next part is we want to find the scalar resolute. So the scalar resolute is a measure of how much vector A protrudes onto vector B. So this black uh, is indicating that's parallel to the vector B is indicating the scalar quantity that represents P. So if we let um, the scalar resolute is equal to P, so that means to work it out P is going to be equal to dot product of A and the unit vector in the direction of B. So if you remember how to work that out, that's just simply I plus 2J, which is the vector A, and we take the dot product with the unit vector, which we worked out just before in step one. And to work out the dot product, we just multiply the corresponding components and add them. It's going to be one times three fifths plus 2 for the j components times 4 fifths which equals 11 fifths. So this is the projection scalar quantity which represents how far onto B if you were able to cast a shadow what the size of P would be. Okay. So finally we come to part 3. Now we're going to use the information we worked out in part one and two to resolve the vector in um, the direction of the vector A in the direction of B. So we've come up with two vectors. We're going to take the vector resolute. We're going to call one P, one vector P. That one is parallel to the vector B. And the one, vector that's perpendicular to the vector B is the other component, which is Q. So to work out the vector P, all we have to do is multiply P the scalar quantity that we had before with the direction that we want, which happens to be the unit vector. So this is going to be 11 fifths times the unit vector, which is 3 fifths i plus 4 fifths j, which works out to be 33 uh, and 25 i plus 44 on 25 J. So this represents now the vector P. So P is parallel to the vector B and also parallel to the unit vector B as well. Okay, so that's part one. So we've got P. Now we're doing a little bit of vector arithmetic. We can, by vector subtraction, work out that Q, the vector Q can be found by subtracting the vector P from the vector A. 
So this will give us Q. So Q is going to be equal to um, I plus 2J minus the vector P that we worked out in, in the previous part, which is 33 on 25I plus 44 on 25J. That works out to be, putting those all on the same denominator there, we're going to get 25 on 25i, this part, plus 50 on 25j, minus 33 on 25i, minus 44 on 25j. So q is going to simplify to become negative 8 on 25i, plus 6 on 25j. So there you have it. So we resolve the vector A has two components, one parallel to the vector B, which is P. So that's equal to 33 on 25i plus 44 on 25j, and the vector Q, which is equal to negative 8 25ths i plus 6 25ths j and there you have it just circle those two and I'll put them on the diagram too so you can see that um, so p the vector p uh, is equal to 33 on 25i plus 44 on 25j and the vector q is equal to negative 8 25ths i plus 6 25ths j. Let me just make my 8 look a bit more like an 8. Okay, and if we add these two together, we should get up, we should end up with the vector a. So this is going to be a is equal to 33 25ths i minus 8 25ths i, that's going to be 25 25ths i, and 44 25ths plus 6 25ths for the j component, that's going to be equal to 50, and I think we've got the right answer, which is, as we, we simplify that, we've got the correct answer. Hooray, done.